Welcome, dear students, to this very first lecture for the course Literary Theory and Literary Criticism. I am your instructor, Julul Burahla. Before we go any further into this course, I just wanted to give you a very good introduction to the course. So, what does this course entail? What are the key components? So, the basic idea uh, to introduce this course was that we realize that the students of literature today, that they are confronted with an array of um, theories, and these, and these theories deal with a variety of domains. I mean, you have textuality, you have language, you have genre-based studies, you have the reading process, and various socio and political and also cultural contexts. We also look at gender and psychology of a character, reception of a text, the emotional effect on the readers, and so on. So we thought it is desirable to have a course which gives you an overview of key theories, contemporary theories, of course, uh, 20th century theories, of course. But we would uh, commence, begin the course by harking back to the times uh, that are um, that contain the, um, the greatest of Western thinkers. Let me also tell you that at this point, this is the course in Western literary theory and Western literary criticism. So coming back to my earlier point, we are going back to the times of the greatest Western thinkers, Plato, Aristotle, Horace, um, Kant and Hegel, Freud, uh, Wordsworth, Pope, uh, Dryden and very recent theories as well. So the course is designed to facilitate the process of making theories accessible to students by offering the basic um, uh, elements and the, in in the essential information on the major Western theories, uh, theorists, the key thinkers and their, of course, most important works and their seminal work. Now, let me give you an overview of what are uh, going to be the major topics of discussion here. So, for the starters, you will gain familiarity with some key concepts in literary theory and literary criticism. For example, allegory, illusion, um, allusion, irony, defamiliarization, carnival, uh, bricolage, postmodernism and its features. Uh, pastille, simulation, and so on. We will also try to look uh, and talk about uh, culture um, by talking about what is culture. And I'm very sure that most of you, you are um, familiar with uh, Raymond William, uh, Williams and culture, his theories of culture. And Raymond Williams' seminal work, Culture and Society, in which he attempts to theorize culture as the whole way of life and here he interprets some keywords such as industry democracy class art literature and um, argued how meanings change with the passage of time this is important in a sense that we often often we find a word in literature meant something at, at the beginning and during the course of time it acquires some other other meanings now going back to raymond williams uh, in his book uh, the long revolution the uh, long revolution williams famously distinguishes between uh, culture with the with the with the capital c and culture with the lower lowercase c uh, capital c uh, lowercase c and for Williams the capital C culture is is high culture which is a sum uh, a sum total of civilizations greatest moral and aesthetic achievements as seen in the works of um, F. R. Leavis and Matthew Arnold uh, before him of course so for Williams the obvious agenda of having culture is to maintain the distinction between high bro and low bro in other words to maintain social class this is something that will be um, um, going into greater detail and analyze it further when we do the course the key concepts in uh, literary theory and literary criticism now uh, 
following that, we will be doing, of course, classical theory. Now, what is uh, classical theory? So we'll be looking at um, Greek and Roman models of literary criticism with an emphasis on classical qualities. We'll be focusing on the literary criticism of uh, thinkers such as Plato, Aristotle, Horace, and uh, uh, Long Longinus. And we will be looking at theories of, of drama, poetry, and style. The, the course will also look at uh, neoclassic theory, which includes early modern and Enlightenment thinkers and writers such as Philip Sidney and Dryden and Pope and Samuel Johnson and Addison and, and, and John Locke. We will be also considering Horace's uh, uh, Poetica um, and other important texts, of course. Um, the next topic would be um, Romanticism. And to begin with, we will look at early 19th century Romanticism with particular uh, reference to French and German Romanticism, where the key writers uh, are Schiller and Germain de Stael and uh, Immanuel Kant and Hegel. Now, um, so we will look at Kant's critique of judgment. This will be followed by an, uh, an in-depth study of uh, English and American Romanticism. The key writers, uh, they are, of course, William Wordsworth. Um, and in America, we have Emerson and also Edgar Allan Poe. We look at the concepts of poetic diction, uh, fancy and imagination. We will also understand the, um, the critical significance of, uh, of, of professed to lyrical uh, ballads and uh, biographies. Just to give an understanding of this movement, what is Romanticism? So I am sure uh, most of you know what Romanticism is. It is a literary and artistic uh, and philosophical movement that originated in, in Europe in the 18th century and lasted until the mid-19th century. Romanticism is characterized chiefly by a rejection uh, or a reaction against Enlightenment and Neoclassicism. Uh, with there is there is in the enlightenment and neoclassicism there is an a stress and an emphasis on on reason and rationality and order and balance etc Rom romanticism on the other hand uh, emphasizes the the individual the the subject the spontaneous often the visionary the mystical and also the imaginative among the characteristics uh, or the characteristic attitudes of Romanticism were a deep sense of the uh, beauty of nature, uh, a general, a general uh, expression of emotion over reason and uh, of the senses over intellect. And Romanticism was also preoccupied with, with the genius, the hero, uh, a view of the artist as a, a supremely individual creator. The movement, uh, of course, included an interest in in folk culture, in um, national and ethnic cultural origins, and the medieval uh, era. Now, Romanticism also showed interest in the in the in the mysterious, the the cult and the exotic. For example, um, uh, with um, College Ridge's uh, Kubla Khan. Uh, we, we also note that the first phase of the Romantic movement in Germany was marked by innovations in both content and literary style and by a uh, pro preoccupation with the mystical, the, the, sub the subconscious and the supernatural. So this is, in short, what we are going to do in the Romanticism. We'll also uh, then move to late 19th century, uh, criticism after that, where the defining theories uh, were that of realism um, and naturalism. And the key theories are um, Emil Zola and Henry, uh, theorists are Emil, Emil Zola and Henry James. We will also look at symbolism and aestheticism in detail, with particular reference to um, Charles Baudelaire and Oscar Wilde. Um, 
we will understand that this is the meaning of art for art's sake and also touch upon uh, um, Arnold and his idea of the touchstone method. Now, T.S. Eliot is also one of the key writers of this time and we will understand his theories of um, of objective correlative and dissociation of sensibility and impersonality of art. All, all of this, of course, uh, touches upon the beginning of the 20th century. Now, moving, in fact, into the 20th century with a specific reference to formalism and new criticism, uh, uh, and then, of course, archetypal criticism is also going to be one major area of discussion. Um, this form of literary criticism that is concerned with the analysis of the original patterns for, for themes and motives and characters in poetry and prose. This approach to literature is uh, based on the idea that um, narratives uh, are a structure according to an archetype or archetypal model. Um, and plot and character are important in so far as they allude to a traditional plot or figure or to patterns that have occurred with wide implications in history. So uh, the question, of course, here is um, what is an archetype? You may also uh, you, you may ask uh, this question, which is a very important question. So an archetype is a primordial uh, image. Uh, a primordial uh, or primitive character or pattern of circumstances that uh, reoccurs throughout literature enough to be considered uh, universal. So the term was um, adopted by literary critics from the writings of psychologist uh, Carl Jung, who formulated the theory of what came to be known as um the collective unconscious. For Jung, the varieties of human experiences have somehow been genetically coded and uh, transferred to successive generations. Some, some of the very common examples of archetypal objects are, and also all archetypal creatures are the olive branches, uh, the, um, the snake, the, the whale, the eagle, the vulture, and all of these are archetypal symbols. Uh, a common example in in is the theme of initiation, the passage from innocence to experience, and the quest motive, of course. Now, what is being discussed here? The, what is being discussed here is the idea of seasons, the universal archetype, the universal pattern of seasons. So, what is being described here, or uh, uh, what are we trying to say? the universal pattern of festivals and seasons, and those of us who are interested in understanding these kinds of theories, they will understand, they will appreciate that uh, there are archetypes that exist all around us. So the theory will give you good indication to understand some of the archetypes that exist universally. Now, the key writers that will be uh, we will be focusing on would be Norther Fry and uh, his famous book Anatomy of Criticism, um, Joseph Campbell, the hero and 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 his the hero with the with the thousand faces, and also uh, Botkin and his uh, archetypal patterns in in poetry. We will uh, then look at uh, um, structuralism and start with uh, theories of Ferdinand de Saussure and also Charles uh, Pierce. Um, Roland Barthes will be another key theorist for uh, structuralism, of course. Now, uh, we will also consider uh, Claude Lévi-Strauss and his mythologies. Uh, structuralism is, um, is a critical movement of the 20th century. It was based on the linguistic theories of Ferdinand de Saussure and held that language is um, a self-contained self system of science. It was also based on the cultural theories of Claude Lévi-Strauss, who held that cultures, like uh, languages, 
could be viewed as systems of science and could be analyzed in terms of the structural relations, relations among the elements. The structural, structuralism in the 1970s was an, uh, was an important phenomenon because of the publication of a number of influential, influential works by American academics, um, including Frederick Jameson's The Prison's House of Language, um, Jonathan Collers and his uh, structuralist poetics, and of course uh, Saussure. Uh, uh, who, who published at the very beginning of the uh, of the 20th century. Um, structuralism helped to eliminate any sense uh, in which literature operated outside or apart from culture by uh, stressing the implication of literature and other cultural practices and elaborate network of science. This also led to the undermining of the artist or the author. Hence, Roland Barthes now famous claim that the, the author was uh, dead. Uh, he claimed that uh, we have the uh, death of the author. At this point, I would draw your attention to an assignment which you uh, should be of course submitting by the uh, by the deadline that you will find in the Moodle course. Now, um, question one um, is who are the main characters in Plato's Ion? Now, remember for this assignment you will have to do some reading of your own, and this is this has this has to be submitted according to the to the date given, of course. Uh, so please stick to the deadline. So um, the second question is, who are the main characters in Plato's Aeon? Now, um, the other question, name any three books on and about archetypal criticism. And the third one, who are the major writers of the aesthetic movement in Europe? And the last one, who is the author of S, uh, SZ. Now, you will find uh, all of these questions, again, for you to write down in your uh, assignment section. Now, our next topic would be uh, reader response criticism. This is a critical method that examines the reader and the act of reading rather than the, the text being read. So remember, uh, remember, note the, the important phrase, the act of reading. Uh, the reader response approach evolved out of pheno phenomenological and interpretive analysis and is closely uh, as associated to uh, reception theory. Some of the key writers of uh, reader response theory are Jaws and Iser and Stanley Fish. We will also look at the concept of interpretive communities and Fish's famous Is There a Text in this class? Now, the next topic would be um, semiotics. Now, um, what is semiotics? We are surrounded with semiotics, which is nothing but the study of science. So, semiology was defined by one of its founders, uh, the Swiss linguist, again, Ferdinand de Saussure, as the study of the life of science within society. The idea of semiotics as an interdisciplinary mode for examining phenomena in different fields emerged in the late 19th century and the early 20th century uh, with the independent works of uh, Saussure and the American philosopher writer uh, Charles Sanders Peirce. Now Peirce defined a sign as something which stands uh, to somebody for something and one of his major contributions to semiotics was the categorization of science into three main types an icon, an index, and a symbol. Now, modern uh, 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 semiotic, semio, 
decisions have applied Pierce's and Strauss's principles to several fields, including aesthetics and communication and psychology. And our task would be to attain or to gain an overview of, of this, of course. The most significant, uh, significant names associated with the theory of uh, semiotics are uh, Claude Lévi-Strauss again, uh, Jack Lacan, uh, Jack Derrida, uh, Michel Foucault, um, um, Roland Barthes, and Julia Kristeva. Um, uh, the next area of discussion would be uh, film theory. And um, I am sure that here you are interested in watching films. But in this course, you will understand not just what motives to watch, to watch, but what movies, sorry, to watch, but also how to appreciate them. Um, now, this is uh, important because it gives us access into how to put into practice the different uh, literary theories that uh, we will discuss together. Now, I'll see you, inshallah, in the second part of this introduction. And uh, thank you very much for listening and see you next time. Thank you.